chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of round 10 of the 2017 Tata Steel Tournament played on Wednesday the 25th of January. The game I picked today is from the tournament leader Wesley So. Let's see how he got on in this 10th round. Wesley So from the United States of America was leading the tournament with 6 points out of 9 games before this round and he was playing white against Radoslav Wojtasek from Poland. Let's have a look. So opened c4, knight f6, knight f3, e6, g3, d5, and with d4 we are in a Catalan opening. Bishop e7, bishop g2, Wojtasek castled, Queen c2 and c5. A lot of pawn tension there in the center. So castled as well. Knight c6. D takes c5. And d4. Wesley So afterwards said that this is a very complex line. And he was not expecting any opening advantage as objectively black has a good position. It was then pointed out to him by the interviewer that it is like a reverse Grunfeld Indian opening and after a while, while saw, so saw that and said that he hadn't realized that during the game and he said well I like the Grunfeld with black so to play it with white is not so bad. a3, a5, so commented that Wojtasek is very good in openings and that he had made the best moves here. Rook d1, e5, and with a tactical point, white develops the knight to c3. That knight, of course, cannot be taken because the pawn is pinned, the rook would be attacking the queen. And here, Wojtasek took on c5 with the bishop. He started to use a lot of time here. Another option that Wesley So showed after the game is knight d7 to take on c5 with the knight. He showed this variation, knight a4, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and then knight g5, checkmate alert on h7. So g7, g6, and then knight e4, and So thought that black should be completely fine here. But okay, Wojtasek took on c5 with the bishop. So played knight d5. And here Wojtasek played a6. He does not want a knight or a bishop to come to g5. Bishop d2 from Wesley So. Wojtasek played a4 here. Wesley So showed that knight takes d5 would not have been a good move because of, because of c takes d5, queen takes d5, and now a very nice move, knight g5. Yes, h6 was played to avoid a piece coming to g5, but here it comes to g5 anyway. Checkmate alert again, and at the same time now the queen is suddenly attacked by the bishop on g2. So this is very good for white. He can still play d3 as Wesley, so showed, but then after e takes d3, white is better. So a5, a4 was played by Wojtasek, bishop b4, and Wojtasek took the bishop. a takes b4, knight takes d5, b takes c5, and knight b4 attacking the queen. Queen e2, knight back to c6, and now comes a move that Wojtasek afterwards said he had missed, which is the move b2, b4. And that pawn cannot be taken by the a pawn en passant, because then the rook on a8 is hanging. Here Wesley So said that probably bishop e6 would have been the best move, it attacks the c4 pawn while the white queen is busy defending the b4 pawn. 
and black should be completely fine here. Instead, after a long think, Wojtasek played queen e7 instead of bishop e6. Queen b2, and Wesley so explained his plan. His, he has two possible plans. One is rook a1 to a3 and rook d, d to a1 and play, put pressure along the a file. Another plan is with knight d2 and b4, b5. Here, Wojtasek played bishop g4, and Wesley So played rook e1. He's preparing one of this, these plans, knight to d2, but to do that he first has to protect the e-pawn, because after knight d2 straight away, the e-pawn would be hanging. Wojtasek played rook fd8. If he had taken, Wesley So showed this, if he had taken on f3, then Wesley So was planning to take back with the pawn. And he said, I'm going to follow that up with f3, f4 to open up the diagonal for the bishop on g2. And he said, those black pawns, they don't really go anywhere. He wasn't too worried about the strong, the strong central black pawns that black has. So again, Wojtasek played rook fd8. Knight d2 as planned from Wesley So, and here Wojtasek played bishop e6. His plan might be to play for f5 and then e4 to block the bishop again on g2. b4, b5 from Wesley So, knight went back to b8 and queen b4. Here Wesley So said that he felt he was getting in control and that in many cases he wins either the a4 or the b7 pawns. f7, f5 from Wojtasek, he has to find some counterplay in the center. And knight b3. After f7, f5, Wesley So first said he wanted to take on a4 with the rook, but then he, when he spotted knight b3 he was very pleased. The point is that black can't do much in this position. You cannot play knight d7 because that will cost the b7 pawn. You can't play that pawn to b6 of course because then the rook in the corner is hanging. And if you play rook a7 for example that would be a waste of time because white takes on a4 and you have to play again with that rook. Wojtasek saw the e4 option, but he didn't like it. Rook takes a4, rook takes a4, queen takes, knight d7, and c6, c5, c6. And Wojtasek did not like this line, and that's why he didn't go for it. And indeed, white is better here. In the end, after a long think, Wojtasek decided to play knight d7, giving up that b7 pawn, which Wesley so took, rook a b8, rook takes a4, rook takes b7, and that cost, that is a piece gone for white, but he gets it back with c5, c6, with a fork. Queen takes b4, rook takes b4, and rook c7. You cannot go back to b8, because then with c6, c7, there is an even better fork for white. So rook c7, c takes d7, takes the piece back, rook takes c4, rook takes c4, bishop takes c4, and the very strong rook c1. It's the only move that wins, but it wins on the spot. The point is that you cannot take that knight on b3, because then there is rook c8, and, and this is a win for white. The black rook cannot take the white rook, of course, because of white getting a new queen, and the rook cannot be protected. Something like rook f8, of course, does not help, because of rook takes f8, 
king takes f8, and you get a new queen after all. So you cannot take the knight on b3, and Wojtasek played bishop e6, attacking the d7 pawn. But it's too late. Rook c8 wins the game. Rook takes, d takes, and bishop takes. And you can ask yourself, what has white gained with all these exchanges? The material is equal, but after b5, b6, Wojtasek resigned. Because if you look at his position a bit longer, then you see that there's nothing that black can do against the following winning maneuver. For example, king f7, knight c5, king e7, b6, b7, and you have to give your bishop for that pawn. And there's nothing you can do about that. And it's a very nice end of the game. Very nice win for Wesley So, very smooth, made it look easy again, and he's now on plus four in this tournament. Wesley So was asked a few questions after he showed his game to the audience, and he was in a good mood, answered the questions with humor. He said, tomorrow is a rest day, I'll look around in Wijk aan Zee. In the last three games I play Andrekin, Wei Yi and Nepomnici. I'd rather play you, you and you, he said to the interviewer. Carlsen's game was a draw today, which is good for me, but it would have been even better if he had lost. I'm not thinking about the World Championship, I just want to play well. These are the results of the 10th round. Three wins with White and four draws. Aronian beat Rapport, Karyakin beat Andrekin, and we saw, we saw Wesley So beating Wojtasek. The standings after round 10, Wesley So still the proud leader a full point, point ahead of five players now. Five players in the hunt, but a full point is a lot with only three rounds to go. Thursday the 26th of January is a rest day and round, round 11 will be played on Friday the 27th of January. I will be here to tell you what happened in that round. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I'm looking forward to seeing your comments and I promise I will, re will reply. This is Rick from Chess Train Press. Thank you for watching.